They rise early, embracing the solitude, contemplating the challenges ahead. This kind of mental preparation develops a mutual trust that carries the horse and rider over the rigors of the cross-country course. It fosters an unspoken communication and common understanding essential for success in the dressage. It results in a oneness that is most evident in the stadium jumping. And today it will be the pair who have formed the strongest bond that will finish the day as champions of the Fox Hall Cup. Fox Hall Farm, located outside of Atlanta. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the Fox Hall Cup, the U.S. National Championships, presented by MBNA. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tim Singer. Well, every sport, of course, has its prestigious event. You know all about the U.S. Open, the World Series, the Super Bowl, and most of those events gain their prestige through many, many years of tradition. Well, here at Fox Hall, we're in the first ever year of this event, and already it's prestigious. Right now, I'd like to introduce my broadcast partner, a four-time Olympian, Jimmy Wolford. And Jimmy, how did so quickly all of this come about and this event got so big before it even ran? This the sport went looking for a site for its national championships, Tim. We wanted a stage that was space age in its capacity, that had viewing lines for a large audience, and we found a couple in the owners, Jim and Janet Richards, who own this farm, and they made the site available, <laughs> and here we are in the first year with a full-scale national championships. At a beautiful location. Of course, ahead we're going to see dressage, cross-country, as well as stadium jumping with very big Olympic overtones at this event. This is the final USA selection. The selection committee is here. They'll be choosing the team after this trials. The pressure is on, the selectors are watching, the riders know they're watching, and that just brings the pressure up another notch. It's the triathlon of equestrian sports, dressage, cross country, and stadium jumping, the $55,000 first place prize, the largest ever awarded in eventing competition. They call it the complete equestrian competition, and Karen and David O'Connor are two of the most complete competitors. When you speak about dressage sometimes as being slower and, and much more exact, it's, it's actually asking very specific things of horses, change of their balance and change of their weight and change of position. And those are tools that they really need when they go out on the cross country. The cross country course is over three, three and a half miles uh, of cross country obstacles, jumping over ditches into water, up and over a mound, anything you can possibly think of that might be in, out in the natural place where a horse would be, uh, and they're doing that at a very high speed. Now when the horses increase their speed and they're going very, very fast across country, uh, then it becomes more challenging to get the horses to be able to do those very same things they were doing in the dressage. And the third day is a show dumping test. Uh, again, an Olympic dif discipline of its own. Um, and it's just jumping colored rails. Uh, it's not as big as what the Olympic discipline, uh, the specialized Olympic discipline is, um, but it's truly, again, testing, again, how careful a horse, the communication of the horse, um, and it's, a, it's kind of a balance between what we have to do over cross country, which is at speed, and this is very controlled and very, very careful. Our first competitor on the cross-country course, Olympic gold medalist Philip Dutton of Australia. He's making a bit of history here. Philip will be the first ever rider to take to this brand new course. It's a new course and what you find is after you've gone to an event for a couple of years, um, you then know how the jumps are going to jump. Nobody really knows how these jumps are going to jump, so I think it's a little <clears throat> premature to say it's too easy or whatever. So. Um, I think it's a, it's a good course to start off with and I think they'll build on it from there. You know, it's, it's got, I think it's quite tough at the end and so the horses need to be fit. Um, and if, you get, if you see at the end of the course is uh, the stone steps and then there's that quite big leap coming down the hill. So you, you, know, you can't go out, you can't come home with an exhausted horse. You still need a bit of horse at the end. So I think it's going to be testing and hopefully they'll get a good result. 36 years old from Australia, although Jim Walford, Philip Dutton now makes his home here in the United States. 
Phillips riding for an American owner, Nina Gardner. Uh, he and Nina own this horse in partnership. You know, Tiger Woods tees it up for the Masters. Everybody comes to watch. When Philip rides out on the course, every, all the riders are going to be watching him to see how it's going to go, because every time he jumps a jump, it's the first time anyone has ever been over it. This course is some three and three quarter miles long, 29 jumps. They will have to negotiate, including this exciting one early. And a big jump into the water. You know, Phillip's experience shows there when he landed over that big splash, he was already thinking about the log and his route out. Philip Dutton and his horse, House Doctor, take a score of 44.4 into the cross country, that following the dressage. They're currently in second place. You see, he's picking up the pace a little bit now on the backside there, really letting the horse stretch out. This is a big square jump. He's not slowing down for it very much. You know, this is a race against the clock, and if you can jump like that, big jumps out of stride, you're going to have a faster time than it looks like you have. He makes a turn now. It's quite a tall log off the turn. This is hard to do when you've just been going at a racing pace down there. Now five strides down to a very big ditch and hedge. And that horse makes it look easy. Here in the straightaway, these horses will gallop over 20 miles per hour. Most of the horses in three-day eventing are thoroughbreds. And they need to be thoroughbreds to go at this pace over three and a half or four miles of cross-country jumps and jump big like that. He's coming up to the jump they call the road crossing now. There's a lot going on in a hurry. You see, he slows down, then he has to kick. The horse takes a little shuffle step and bounces out. The horse jumps twice on the same breath when it takes a bounce. And so that takes something out of your horse's energy. On the full gallop here, these horses are trying to get under the maximum allotted time of 10 minutes, 35 seconds, or there will be extra penalty points. We're going into the section of the course that Philip was worried about. This is a very steep uphill series of jumps. If your horse is tired, it's going to be hard to do. That horse makes it look easy. I think that the riders are going to see this and start thinking, hmm, you know, we can keep coming at this complex. Clear at 18 for Mike Winter. Way up and now way down. A very tough series as they now come close to the finish line. Very well done there. That's a hard jump to do when your horse is getting a little bit tired and jump down that steep a slope. They have to be very fit, very well trained, and still have a lot of strength left. Final two jumps, that was jump number 28, now approaching the final obstacle. Australia, along with the United States, New Zealand, and Great Britain are the powers in this sport. The ones to watch out for in Sydney. You can see why this horse is going a racing pace here at the end of almost four miles and jumping a very big jump well for the last. Approaching the finish line and he's cutting it very close with time, just under the mark, 10 minutes, 34 seconds, no additional penalties. So a score of 44.4, Dutton can do no worse than second place heading into the final day. That's a fabulous round, you know, watching him all the way around. The only place he had any problem at all was over there in the sunken road, and that wasn't a problem. The horse just showed his inexperience. He's in hand here. He takes a little shuffle step on the top. He lands a bit straight-legged, so he has to work hard to get out. Safely through the course, let's hear from Philip Dutton. Well, I couldn't be more happy. Um, I've got a young horse. Um, he needed to go clear for, uh, to qualify for the Olympics, so I, my main priority was to go clear. So I sat out a little cautious with the speed at the beginning and um, just picked it up as I went around. And he got more confident too. It's a nice, nice course. Um, the heat is going to play a factor, I think, uh, later on in the day. It's very hot now and, um, you know, we've still got rising temperatures. So, uh, you know, aggressive cooling. And, uh, but the course, you know, is riding well. So I think if everybody keeps their head, I think it's going to be good. Philip Dutton and House Doctor safely and successfully negotiating the cross-country course. Hey, we're just warming up here in the Georgia sunshine. When we return, we've got much more cross-country and stadium jumping for you, including American Karen O'Connor. The inaugural Fox Hall Cup is being brought to you by MBNA, America Bank.
Tim Singer and Jim Walford back here at Fox Hall Farm outside of Atlanta. We have one cross-country rider already in the books. Philip Dutton of Australia has the lead, and we've seen this very tough course. Now take us through it, Jim. It starts out with a nice run. You have a couple of easy jumps. The second jump is unusual because you're already in water. You turn away from the crowd. Then you come a long run back to the first water complex, which is going to pose some problems. It's a big drop in. The next log happens quickly. You have to be back in hand. There are only a couple of strides in between the two logs. Then you have a chance to get up on dry land, jump the corners, a very big table, then the bounce here. The horses step in and step out with no room to take a stride. Again, a couple of galloping fences, a very large cedar oxer here at 16, and then a turn over a large fence back into the arena to the second of the water complexes. The riders are worried about the road crossing. They think that's going to take a lot of jumping. You have to make sure that you're in hand. If you approach too fast, things can go wrong in a hurry. Then once you're back on course, it's a long run down along the Chattahoochee River before turning back toward the big stone steps uphill. If your horse is tired, this can be quite a difficult fence. Then you turn up through the trees, coming down over the Foxhall Dam jump. This is imposing, but the horses seem to understand it and land on the down slope well. Sometimes they trot in, the riders make sure they lean back, going down quite a steep slope. And then it's a long gallop down to 28 and 29, the two last fences on this almost four mile cross country course. And they have to do that course again in a time of 10 minutes, 35 seconds. Up next, Karen O'Connor from the Plains, Virginia. O'Connor, the Olympic silver medalist in 1996. That Olympic appearance certainly wasn't the biggest moment in her career, but as far as recognition, Karen knows what the Olympics are all about. There is absolutely nothing I've ever experienced that feels like being in an Olympic Games and having that feel of that people don't necessarily completely know about your sport, but they know you're an American and they know that they want you to win and they're right there trying to win with you. And Jim, the biggest moment in her career may have been one year ago, winning a four-star event, the biggest in the world. Four-star means it's Olympic in difficulty. There are only four of them around the world. To win one is the defining moment of a rider's career. She's making a good turn here, coming back to the MBNA step. She's a little slow when she lands, but you notice she accelerates away from the fence, and she still looks like she's accelerating as she gets to the steps. Now, we should note that this is probably the number three horse on the depth chart for Karen O'Connor. Number three horse and jumping this course pretty well, so she's got to feel good about her chances so far. Karen won her four star on the horse Prince Panache. This horse, Grand Slam, unfortunately, this two find themselves in 34th place after the dressage. So they are playing catch up. She had the same trouble in the dressage. You see the horse is still fighting her, so she did not get a good score from the judges in the first phase. Taking the final jump, this is Karen O'Connor and Grand Slam. Their time is 10 minutes, 27 seconds. No additional penalties, so they have a score of 65.4. She was still really coming forward down the hill here. That's very intelligent. When the horse will step through the brush, it means they're taking less energy. He does it again. She lands in a really good balance. That's quite a good ride. Well, it's terrific. Uh, you know, it's a great place here, and the course just rode beautifully. I'm riding a relatively inexperienced horse, and I think he's gained a lot of confidence from his experience today. The course rode beautifully. Certainly one of the best riders in the country, and no question about it, the local favorite is Julie Black from Noonan, Georgia. Julie is part of a husband-wife equestrian team, along with her husband, Stuart, a two-time Olympian from Canada. On Wednesday, the riders get out and walk the course, measure it. The horses won't see it until they actually gallop up to it. Stuart's experience is really going to help Julie here. You know, you want to make them creep in there and then jump up. I think it's too easy to jump this well and jump down and then go oh sugar because that distance too, um, once you get up the wall, is way tighter than the MBNA coming out of the water. You know, it's like six feet. You know, it's got a bit of an apron on it, but I, I still think it's going to ride very tight. 
And then here you can go back at it and accelerate to that ditch again. And do you think I want to be a little bit left to right at it? Well, because it I does slope down. Because it'll only be smaller on this side. Uh -huh. And what I like is I like the fact that if you come across there, you've got all your line right. If you're on this side going up, it's so easy to make that turn. Okay. You know, when you're on this side, it's a sharp angle. Uh -huh. You know, and I think with this, all you want to do is just keep going. And because you're going uphill too, make it the easiest route for them just to take that bend and just keep on going. If you're coming at it left to right, you've got a right angle. But I would, I would gallop across there and just let them separate all of this and then attack it again. I wouldn't just come and just gallop at it, you know. And Jim Walford, we now join Julie Black on course with her horse Bartolomeo. 21st place after the dressage. Yeah, she's had a little bit of trouble there. Jumped very big across, but jumped well out. She had trouble getting him back to the speed that Stuart was talking about in the approach. Great story with Julie Black by being married to Stuart. Julie has the opportunity to compete at the Olympics for Canada as she makes her way here over the steps. That might be an easier road to Sydney than as a United States competitor, but she said no way. If she qualifies, she wants to carry the red, white, and blue. Well, she's definitely at that level, but she's suffering a, an injury. She's basically riding with a broken back. You can see that she's losing her balance a little bit coming down the hill. Not as well poised as, say, Karen O'Connor was earlier. Julie Black and her horse Bartolomeo, a horse actually owned by Foxhall Farm owner Jim Richards. Now approaching the final jump. Slows down a bit. Ooh, a little bit of a problem over that last jump, but time will not be a problem. So Julie Black, 21st place after the dressage, comes through with a clear round here and a score of 61.8. In its first year ever, this is the Fox Hall Cup just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, on the cross-country course, one of the best in the USA. This is Abigail Lufkin. She's a two-time bronze medalist from the Pan Am Games. She's never made the Olympics, so she really has that in her sights, and she knows this is the last U.S. Olympic trials. No question about that. Lufkin and her horse, Hannigan, among the best in the field, but even the best have to contend with a brand new and very difficult course designed by Captain Mark Phillips. With so much new ground about, I didn't want to make it t too difficult. Um, and so it's, it's pretty straightforward, but there's one or two places which give the riders the opportunity to make a mistake, and um, one or two of them are finding it. But uh, I think most uh, uh, are jumping around real well and uh, finding the time not too difficult, and um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy for, for a first time here. Jimmy, you mentions one or two tough areas, mostly at the end of this course. This is Jane Slaper. The riders were worried about this. Jane's horse leaves a leg going in. Throws her up against the wall. Fortunately, she's able to get up and continue, and she does complete the course. Also, a bit of a mishap for Clark Montgomery on mint edition. Clark has a refusal here going up the second step, and he has to circle around. Also, Clark was able to finally complete the course. Quickly back to Abigail Lufkin approaching the steps. You see the difference in the way this horse is approaching the steps. A lot of energy up, a really quick rebound up the final step, and galloping on up what is quite a steep slope. Abigail, 29 years old from Middleburg, Virginia. Now the steep downslope of the dam. Oh, oh, oh. She landed a little bit ahead of her knees. She made a good recovery. She's a kind of a bit sketchy going on down that slope. As we said, she's making her case for an Olympic berth in 2000. That team will not be named officially until September. However, a preliminary list is due out in a matter of weeks, and this team will train all summer right here at Fox Hall Farm. Here comes Abigail Lufkin with a time of 10 minutes, 26 seconds. No penalties. Her score of 50.4 keeps her in the top 10. Well, next up, we have one of the greats coming off of a third place last week at the Rolex competition. This is David O'Connor. David's on the most experienced horse in the competition. He and Gil Tedge were individual silver medal winners last year at the Pan American Games. Team Gold, they know all about this sport, and I think we're going to see a copybook round here. O'Connor, husband of Karen O'Connor from the Plains, Virginia. He, along with everyone else in this competition, has one thing on their mind, the new course. It is a young course. It is a course that is being developed. 
um, some new sites. We don't really know um, how some of the sites are going to are, are going to work, uh, especially with the water combinations being so close to the people. Um, so things like that are going to have an effect on the horses, and I think the first water is a, is a very very tough question. You see his experience there, making the turn in the water, getting his horse back in hand here for the sunken road. He's good here, a short stride, strong across, a good bounce out. You see his experience. He's right back at the gallop as quickly as he can, closing his legs. Now he's got the horse back in hand, leaning back to help the horse keep his balance. And good over that last brush. Now he's going forward to gain speed down the slope. Third place following the dressage. What do you think, Jimmy? David O'Connor, best shot at an Olympic position for the United States? I think David's got a terrific shot at it. His wife, Karen, has three horses that are qualified. We've got a very strong team coming for the trip to Sydney. Still ahead, Tiffany Loudon. She was in first after the dressage. She's coming up in a bit, but here comes David O'Connor, the veteran from the United States, the Olympic silver medalist, approaching the final jump and taking it cleanly and zipping through this course with a time of 10 minutes, 14 seconds, no additional penalties. That has been the case with all of the top horses today, a score of 49.8. David making a good turn here, keeping the horse together, and then a strong ride up the step and leans over and gallops away. And justifiably, he was pumped and feeling victorious at the end. Yeah, I had a wonderful ride. You know, Gilt Edge is my most experienced horse. He's been, you know, in every team competition in the last uh, three years that there can be. And, and he's got a tremendous amount of experience. And um, I wanted a good run to get ready for him the summer, you know, quick and uh, confident. And he just, he absolutely didn't put a foot wrong. He was one of the best courses I've ever, ever had on him. It was, I just got into a rhythm. I was ahead of the clock on the first minute and, and was just kept eating up time without pressing him. I and mean, all the fences just kept rolling out in front of me just like it was nothing. So it was, uh, it was exactly the ride that I was hoping for. O'Connor trails only Philip Dutton in the clubhouse with Tiffany Loudon still to come. But here comes Michael Godfrey on course already. He was just behind David O'Connor in fourth place after the dressage. You see Michael land over that second jump on the turn and glance down to his left. He's looking at a big wristwatch that all these riders carry on their arm. They're very meticulous about measuring the course so they know. You heard David a moment ago say he was early at the minute marker. They know exactly where they should should be on their wristwatch all the way around the course. And that's why it's really not a major coincidence when they come in just under the time. They have a good sense of pace, but they've usually also got a very good wristwatch on there. You see Michael shaking his horse up a little bit. He knows something we don't know. This horse needs a strong ride in the water. Godfrey, 42 years old. He's from New Jersey. His horse is Allegro. Allegro's a strong jumper, but he's a little bit slow. He doesn't quite have the stride that some of these horses do. And, the and Michael has Michael. to ride in a hurry to get the horse close to and the Allegro. time. Here's first, here at 11. Good ride and across Michael's the two corners. You know, that takes very accurate riding. You have to thread the needle to get them over those two points. Michael Godfrey and Allegro, fourth place after the dressage, hoping to maintain that standing as they approach the final jump and take it cleanly. A finish time of 10 minutes, 28 seconds, and no additional penalties. That has been the case with the top riders all day long. And the best of the best, Tiffany Loudon, in first place after the dressage. She's coming up next. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the inaugural Fox Hall Cup. You know, during the 1996 Olympics, several nations lived and trained here at Fox Hall. Why not? This is one of the best equestrian facilities in the country. Jim Wolford, an underlying aspect of this sport is the welfare of the horse. The horses are inspected before each of the phases. If the officials are not completely satisfied with their condition, they're not allowed to continue. So they really take care of the welfare and the safety of the horses and the riders. 
Day one prior to the cross country was the dressage competition. And Jim Wolford, more than any other event in equestrian, maybe in sports, this is the most formal event you'll see. The most formal, the most stylized, all of the horses and riders do the same mandatory pattern of figures. If you want to know what the judges are looking for, I think it's pretty simple. If you can see the rider move, or if you see the horse suddenly break his rhythm, that's wrong and the judges are going to take marks off for it. This is a sport which has its roots in the military and the dressage resembles the horse and rider on the parade ground. They're based on parade ground maneuvers, but these days dressage has a very pragmatic effect on the horse and rider. You need this kind of control over your horse to be able to gallop at a solid jump in the next phase. Incredible the diversity of these horses here on the parade ground, so to speak, and the next day galloping on the cross country. Well, Tiffany Loudon, pictured here, had the best of all of the dressage runs and a score of 42.6. That was the leading score ahead of Philip Dutton, David O'Connor, while Michael Godfrey and Abigail Lufkin were tied for fourth place. A look at the back five and we see Lindsay Wagner in eighth place and she has a good chance to move up following her cross country run earlier today. But here is Tiffany Loudon and she was in first place entering the day. And what a life she has led the last two weeks. She had this horse ready for the International Open a week ago. The horse had a stone bruise. It means it had a mild problem in its foot. She took him home, got him rested, and here he is galloping out onto the cross-country course in first place after the disappointments last week. Launching into the water there. And good across two strides here. Oh, yes, she's right on her game. You see her head and eyes turn to the left before the horse landed. She probably gained a second or a two right there in that turn. Her wonderful horse, Maccabi, a 16-hand height thoroughbred, and at 13 years old, this is a veteran and has been through some wars. He's a veteran. He's been through some wars. He won a three-star event in Kentucky two years ago, so he's no stranger to top-level competition. A little bit strong there. I didn't think she quite got him back enough. But his experience saves her, and she's out very well and galloping on. $55,000 for the winner of this competition. And Tiffany has conceded that stadium jumping is her weak link, so she cannot give up any ground here. She's not worried about the stadium. Oh, she's almost too fast there. I think she's worried about the cross-country course. She knows she has to have a clean, fast round to stay in the lead after the dressage, and she's concentrating on that right now. I'm not gonna put it down. In a very smooth and quick gallop towards the final obstacle. This is Tiffany Loudon from Middleburg, Virginia. Just 24 years old. Here's some trivia for you. She was born on Leap Day, February 29th, 1976. And she is through our final competitor here on the cross country course. No penalty faults, a score of 42.6. She will be the leader. Here she comes down to the big drop into water. The horse gathers himself and then launches out. You see how quick she is to get the horse galloping again. Watch her head and eyes. She's gonna save time on the turn. Away she goes. He was great out there. He didn't miss a beat. Um, he's one of my best rides, I think, on him. He's real fast and jumped everything out of stride. So I couldn't ask for anything more. From young Tiffany to the grand old man of U.S. equestrian, Bruce Davidson is coming up when we return. For many decades, the United States has been a strong nation in the sport of equestrian, but thanks to that man right there, now 50-year-old Bruce Davidson, several years back, the USA became part of equestrian elite. He won the world championships in 74. He's won several big competitions since then, including another gold medal in the world championships. And he's on quite a good horse. This horse is not terribly experienced at the three-star level, but this horse's owner, Joan Hyman Berg, let me ride apparition, and he is a fabulous jumper. Here's Bruce Davidson. Whoa, and a big jump down into water. You see Bruce losing his balance for a second. There's his experience right back up in his reins, going with the horse, balanced up the slope. Oh boy. I like the way you see he's galloping on. Now he's set the horse up again. 
and he's going down to a corner combination that I thought's pretty difficult. Oh, he's got no fear. He saw where that horse was going to step from 75 feet away. Think of the time he saved galloping through there. Bruce Davidson is a reminder that equestrian is one of the very few Olympic sports that not only isn't gender specific, it's not age specific. To a certain extent, the older you get, the smarter you get. And when you get someone with Bruce's experience like this on a horse like apparition that can jump the way he does, and you see why he's just skipping you know, around over these things. 15th uh, place following the dressage. To 19. You see, Bruce wastes no time. He galloped through the water, got back on dry land, accelerated. Whoa, a little stumble there. And he had to leave long coming to the step out, but he's safe and back on course. With that red jersey and number 77 ablazoned on his bib, he reminds you of the galloping ghost, Red Grange. And he's doing some galloping here as he's getting toward the back part of the course. Fuller run at the steps. Whoa, a big jump there. I think Bruce got a little bit excited about how well this horse is jumping. He almost asked him to leave from too far back. Making a good case to jump into the top 10, entering the jumping. Here comes Bruce Davidson, the 50-year-old veteran from the United States, approaching obstacle number 29, the final jump in this second phase of the three-day event, the cross country. It draws to an end with this Bruce Davidson run, and he is through with no faults and a score of 58.8. You see here he's making a nice balanced turn. Everything's going well, but you need a little bit of luck, and I think Bruce gets it right there. The horse seems to lose his footing. He closes his legs, picks up the reins. The horse listens to him, no problem. Now here he leaves a little bit too long. The horse's right hind leg stays too low. He barely gets up to the top of the step. From the power of the cross country to the precision of the stadium jumping. That's coming up next. David O'Connor, just one of the riders preparing. For more information on the 2001 Fox Hall Cup, check out the website at www.foxhallcup.com. We're back here at the Fox Hall Cup. Tim Singer along with Jim Wolfer. Jimmy, two events down, one to go. Of course, it's the stadium jumping. Another huge crowd on hand. American Tiffany Loudon leading the way. What an emotional 10 days for Tiffany. Tiffany went to the Olympic selection trials last week. She didn't compete. She came here. She's in the lead going into her weakest phase. She is in the lead, but she was almost kicked out of this final day. The judges looked at her horse very carefully during the veterinary examination. They decided the horse was okay to continue, and I think that was the right decision. She is coming into her weakest phase in first place, which means she has to wait and jump last. The pressure is just rising. The pressure is rising. The standings are tight for American Tiffany Loudon to win the national championship. She'll have to stave off Australian Philip Dutton, a couple of other Americans, David O'Connor and Abigail Lufkin also in the top five. Keep your eye on Mike Godfrey and Olympic veteran Phyllis Dawson also. As we check out the back six, there are some formidable opponents who could move up, including Bruce Davidson, currently sitting in 10th place. As for some of the other notables, well, Julie Black, the local favorite, has fallen into 15th place, while Karen O'Connor, not riding her top horse admittedly, has withdrawn from the competition, still very much an Olympic hope. And a little earlier today, Jim Wolford, this was Julie Black on the stadium jumping course. You see these horses, all they have to do is tap the rail and it comes down. Every time one of those rails comes down, it's five faults. You want your horse to jump up around the fences the way Apparition is doing here. Davidson in 10th place after the cross country had a clear round here in the stadium jumping and he held on to the top spot at least until Philip Dutton went with his first of two mounts. The riders are going in reverse order of standing. That means the better you do in the first two places, the longer you have to wait before you come into the arena here. Dutton had that clear round, and that puts him as the leader in the clubhouse as we're down to our last several horses, the very best in the standings. In seventh place entering the stadium jumping, here's Lindsey Wagner. Lindsey has a wonderful mare here in Utah Jazz. They've come all the way across the country from Utah for a crack at the national championships. I think they've surprised some people. 
uh, at, at how well they've done here, Tim, but they certainly haven't surprised me. I've expected this sort of performance from them. This stadium jumping course has 12 jumps, a total of 15 jumping efforts. That means jump six is a double combination and jump number 11, a triple. This course has the riders worried. It's very big, it's very square. You saw in the highlights reel, the poles come down easily. So you have to keep your concentration all the way across. I think it's hard to go in a ring here where they're galloping over painted fences right next to cross country jumps that they were jumping the day before. The crowd is a factor, the turn is a factor, there are a lot of things going on. You see how hard Lindsay had to work to get her horse across that big spread, then back in hand to step over the Liverpool. Now she's coming down. This is a very big line here in front of the main bleachers. Oh, and a pole comes down there at the last element. Jump number 11C, the third of that triple combination. The only fault for Lindsay Wagner, but it puts her in back of Philip Dutton into second place. Here she is from another view. I think she just loses her balance a little bit. The horse tips it with her front foot. When we return, it's Abigail Lufkin hoping for a spot on the podium. Back here at the Fox Hall Cup, where over 7,000 fans have shown up for the third and final day, the stadium jumping. Beautiful day here in Georgia. This is Abigail Lufkin aboard her horse, Hannigan, fifth place entering this final phase. Abigail's got quite a string of horses. Hannigan's the least experienced, but in some ways he's the strongest and most powerful. Look at the space he gets up over these fences. This is a tight turn here back to the uh, small narrow brown oxer coming away from the crowd horses tend to lose their concentration not this boy abigail has approximately a six point lead over philip dutton who remains the leader in the clubhouse so she has one rail to play with yeah but you know when you go in there you're not thinking to yourself well i've got a rail or i can afford to have a whoa she can't afford to have many jumps like that i'll tell you that You've got to get back in hand here, get your head back in the course, or you'll have a knockdown like that. I think she was distracted by the bad jump she had there on the turn and then knocked the next one down. These jumps happen very close together, so your head has got to be in the course all of the time. Five penalty points for that one knockdown. That is all she can afford as she approaches the triple combination. Got to keep the horse in hand. He's wandering a little bit through there. Looked a little bit green. They should come through on a straight line. Time limit of 88 seconds. Abigail approaches the final jump, and she's in and under at 86 seconds, just the one knockdown. I think the horse is distracted here. You know, he didn't know whether he was supposed to jump the rustic fence going back into the water. He suddenly jumped off to the right. The Abigail is slightly distracted, and here comes the five-point knockdown. Despite the knockdown, Abigail Lufkin takes over the lead as we get set for Michael Godfrey aboard Allegro. And coincidentally enough, Godfrey with the exact same score as Lufkin entering the stadium jumping. They can finish in a tie, but they'll break it on the horse that has the time across country closest to the perfect time if they're both without penalty. This is going to take a lot of doing, though, because this is a big horse over a course that's taking a lot of jumping. This has been a troublesome jump for a lot of the riders earlier, and so too for Michael Godfrey. You know, they, they drift around the turn, they look off into the crowd. It takes a very mature horse and rider to jump that clean. So he has one knockdown. That is his only room for error. That's what makes this so exciting, is the fact that really when you get down to the final few horses, it really boils down to one rail, you lose a spot. Yes, or if you can jump a clean round, you can put an enormous amount of pressure on the riders that, are, that think that they're coming in ahead of you, but they've still got to jump clean. Big fence over the triple bar. Oh, and he leaves out a stride to that. He shouldn't have done that. I think that the other decision would have been better to slow the horse down. Now he's starting to try and slow back down, get the horse balanced. He was lucky that first element stayed up. Oh, the third element stayed up. He's really rubbing these fences late in the course. You have to keep the horse balanced. 
Well, for Michael Godfrey, a finish time of 85.11, but those two crucial knockdowns moves him back five spots. This horse is big and strong. I think he needs a lot of keeping together in the turns. Michael sees his stride, sends him forward. Oh, but he bumps it behind. You see the trouble he's having. That's, that's not good when the horse's head and neck is moving from side to side. Oh, he bumps that again behind. He's got to get him back. Abigail Lufkin of the United States has the lead, but when we return, it is a U.S. equestrian teammate of hers, David O'Connor, set to go. It is in its first year, and this is the Fox Hall Cup. As promised, Jim Wolford, this is already a great competition and an exciting event. Down to our final three horses. This is David O'Connor of the United States. David's starting out well. This horse looks fresh. He's jumping up around his jumps. He has the advantage that he knows this horse the best of any of his horses. That's unfortunate there. That's really going to move him down. That one rail down has already moved him out of any chance of taking over the top spot. Now he just needs to be clean the rest of the way. The thing you have to do when you get a mistake like that, you know the situation as well as anyone, but you have to concentrate on the next jump. Go to the next jump and jump it clean because he hasn't finished the course. You know, he's still got a lot of big efforts to go. O'Connor coming off of a third place performance in the four star competition last week. The Olympic silver medalist. And a good fencer over the triple bar. David, very accurate, moving his horse's stride up and then getting him back in hand. You notice he took one more stride than Michael Godfrey did with his horse. I think that's why he jumped it clean. Whoa, the front element comes down, and he's lucky to leave the back one up. That line is riding very hard. Well, a very quick time across the finish of 78.96 seconds, but the 10 faults from the two knockdowns. Well, you can see here he just bumps the first element behind. He's lucky not to knock the third one down behind. That line is very hard. Australia's Philip Dutton ready to make his run at the top of the leaderboard and very excited about his country hosting the upcoming Olympics. Australia is such a sporting nation. Um, my wife and I were back there recently and all the billboards are just like plastered with everything about the Sydney Olympics and everybody's talking about it. Um, my whole family have booked tickets to come and see me, so I, I do hope I get there. Um, but, it, you know, it is, it is going to be a, a great event. It's not often that um, a major sporting event comes to Australia. You know, it's a long way away, so, um, and I think it's going to be run really well. The government are right behind it. They've put a lot of time and money into it. The facilities are good. Um, we went and looked at the horse park. It, I think it's going to be a, uh, an Olympics for everyone to remember. Well, what Philip's going to remember right now is he's got to jump the next fence clean. He's got two roles in mind here. He wants to jump a clean round, and he wants to put the pressure on a rookie that he knows is weak in the final phase. And that rookie is Tiffany Loudon, still waiting to go. She'll be the final competitor. But David O'Connor, who just went, showed us how vulnerable even the best riders in the world are. He had two knockdowns to move back to sixth place. That's the pressure part of jumping in reverse order of standing. You know it can go either way. You can either gallop up on the leaderboard or you can fall way back in the pack. Still clear. He does have a rail to play with. He has a six-point advantage over Abigail Lufkin, who still holds the lead. And he's not leaving anything to chance. He's the first rider we've seen to turn inside that brown fence there. He's trying to save every second that he can to make sure he doesn't even have a time fall. Approaching the tough triple combination. And he has the knockdown. That's all he can afford, Jimmy. He's got to jump one more clean. Keep the horse on the contact. And jump around. Yes, and under the time limit. So Philip Dutton has moved into first place. In fact, he holds two of the top three positions. You see here, he's galloping up to the fence, a little bit of bounce in his stride. Then he moves on, I think maybe just a tiny bit too much. Making a good case to perform well at his home country Olympics, Philip Dutton can do no worse than second place. He holds two of the top three positions. Just one competitor left to go in front of her friends and family. From South Carolina, it's 24-year-old Tiffany Loudon when we return. 
10 days ago, yeah. Tiffany Loudon and Maccabi had to pull out of the first major Olympic qualifier. Jim Wolford, they thought their Olympic dreams ended there, but here they are one week later, gunning for a national championship at the Fox Hall Cup in first place and a chance to regain that Olympic stature. Imagine the pressure that's going on in this young lady's mind. She walks into a ring that has been peopled with riders in red coats all day. That means they've already ridden for their country in international competition. She's on a horse that in this same situation a year ago had four knockdowns, and she knows if she can jump a clean round, She'll win the national championships. In, what about the pressure? Exactly. In fact, she does have one rail to play with, but on an earlier mount, Tiffany was one of the slowest riders on this course and had some time penalties. So this is going to be interesting towards the end. It's going to go right down to the wire. Her stock ties out already. I don't like that. I think that's, that's a sign you're starting to unravel. You want everything tucked away. It's hard to concentrate, but she's doing it. Look, she just made the same turn. Philip Dutton made that turn, and now here comes the rookie on a 16-year-old horse trying to show the world. This crowd is dead silent, and they aren't nearly as nervous as this young rider this is, is now. This is a hard line. This is a hard line coming up. Oh, she tapped it. Oh, yes. she tapped that yes. one again. In fact, she's won it. She has this rail to play with, so now will she have a clear round, Jim Wolford? Yes. yes, she does. And look at that crowd go wild, winning it with an exclamation point. A clear round, 86.21 seconds, and Tiffany Loudon has captured the inaugural Fox Hall Cup and with it, the U.S. National Championship. Loudon takes the title over the Australian Olympic champion. Let's go down to Jim Wolford with Tiffany. Tiffany, congratulations. You went right down to the wire to win it. How do you feel? I feel great. This is a super horse, and he really did well all weekend. This isn't your strongest phase. How did you feel going in there? What was the change in your tactics that gave you a clean round? Just constantly trying to talk myself down and calm my nerves and concentrate on riding each fence as it came. What an emotional roller coaster you've been on for the last 10 days. After your disappointment last weekend, how did you get yourself ready again? Just went home, got the horses feeling good, and worked on all three phases. Had some lessons and tried to come here and do the best I could. Drama, emotion, and an exciting finish. All of the ingredients which have made this inaugural Fox Hall Cup already one of the most exciting eventing competitions in the world. Our congratulations to Tiffany Loudon, staving off the great Australian Olympic champion, Philip Dutton. Now for all of the grapes in the world, it is indeed the push for Sydney and the 2000 Olympic Games. For Jim Wolford, I'm Tim Singer saying thanks for joining us and so long from Fox Hall Farm. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, a part of the Go Network, go.com.